certification of quorum? Yes, Chair White, we have more than 50% of the members present. Ch Chair White, I, yes, don't know if, I don't know if it's possible, but can there be a um, video or a screen on the person that is speaking at the meeting? It's tough. All we see is the audio. We don't have no video of the person speaking. That isn't possible? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Okay, no problem. All right. That's, I hear what you're saying, but uh, the only thing that I think that the box highlights, doesn't it? No. Only if you're virtual. Anyway, here we go, Rob. It is what it is for now. All right. So I want to welcome, welcome uh, everyone to today's meeting. I've got some comments here. On April 3rd, Conservation Ontario held its annual general meeting, which included the election of the board of directors. This year, Samantha stepped down as director, which allowed me to run and to be acclaimed as chair for this term. I'm thankful for the opportunity to participate at that level with Conservation Ontario as our supporting organization and other voice and another voice with our provincial and federal partners. And the, the goal here really is to try to, we've had a lot of uh, changes recently to try to you know, get in front of the province and get the best arrangements we can have based on where we are currently. So that's really my main goal is to try to repair that re relationship. Uh, other AGM items included Items of interest included appointment of conservation area work in, working and discussion groups, approval of special projects, projects under nature, smart climate solutions, and the launch of the 2023 watershed report card and CO's annual report. All right. GRC, GRCA staff are organizing a watershed tour for board members tentatively scheduled for September 28th. The tour will include a coach trip leaving from head office with a tour of the <laughs> Shandam Bellwood, can you, okay. Shandam and Bellwood and a visit to the Allura Gorge and Guelph Lake Nature Center grounds. A save the date will be sent following today's meeting to hold space in the calendars. We hope all of our board members can accommodate the day. GRCA staff in collaboration with the Watershed Partnership Organizations and supporting municipalities are hosting the Children's Water Festivals in May and June after a three year hiatus. These events offer interactive learning opportunities for children to learn about the importance of water resources. If you'd like more information about the events, please send an email to staff. Finally, today is April 28th. It is the National Day of Mourning, a day that commemorates workers who have been killed, injured, or suffered illness due to workplace-related hazards and occupation exposures. It is also a day for organizations and employees to reflect on their joint commitment to health and safety in the workplace. And I just bring this up because it's today and you'll notice that the flags are at half, half mast and that's why that's... So Mike, did you wanna say something? Uh, uh, sure, I suppose. Uh, Is that... Sorry? Okay, Thank so you. if we're here at 11, We'll do it then. Thanks, Mike. Okay, so moving right along, we're gonna do a review of the agenda. This is the source protection meeting, by the way, for those who are following along. So I have a motion that the agenda for the source protection authority meeting be approved as circulated. Got it moved by Brian and John. Any opposed? It is carried, thank you. I have a motion that the minutes of the source protection authority meeting of December 16th 2022 be approved as circulated. Moved by Sean, seconded by Sue. Any opposed? Carried, thank you. Right down to correspondence. We have a couple of items there. I have a motion that correspondence from the Lake Erie Source Protection Committee regarding the source protection annual progress reporting and the updated Grand River Assessment Report and the source protection plan be received as information. Moved by Bruce, Bruce, seconded by Lisa. Any opposed? All in favor? That is carried, thank you. No bylaws at this point. So we're at 12.1 Grand River Annual Progress Report. We do have a presentation. Sherry Dahmer is going to uh, present to us. So welcome Sherry and I'll just uh, turn the floor over to you. Thanks.
Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, so I'm gonna to present to you on the Source Protection Annual Progress Report. Uh, so the Grand River Source Protection Area uh, contains 50 municipal systems and one First Nation system that provides water to over 800,000 residents in the watershed. The aim of the Drinking Water Source Protection Program is to have science-based, locally developed source protection plans on a watershed basis uh, to provide additional protections for municipal water supplies. So the source protection plan identifies areas and activities that can be risk to municipal drinking water sources. Let me fix my screen, there you go. Um, and policies within the plan contain requirements for actions to protect drinking water. These policies can affect municipal land use planning and provincial approvals. Uh, and softer policy tools such as education and outreach are also used to support management policies. Annual, annual reports on progress towards implementation of drinking water source protection plans are required to be submitted to the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks by May 1st of the following year. The progress report contains valuable information on the implementation of the source protection plan and overall success of the program. Uh, so the process for reporting is municipal staff report annually on progress towards implementing source protection policies within their municipality. That information is then rolled up for the source protection authority as a whole using reporting templates that are provided by the ministry. This progress report then goes to the source protection committee uh, where they re receive the report and provide their recommendation. The role of the source protection authority is then to receive the recommendation for assessment from the committee and the authority then submits the report to the ministry along with any comments that they wish to make. So in 2021, the Lake Erie Region Source Protection Committee uh, recommended, um, they recommended modified language to the overall progress uh, for the report. Uh, so the language that they recommended was progressing well short of target. This, the committee felt that it was important to highlight the fact that overall, implementation of the plan has been progressing well, despite challenges in implementing some of the plan policies. So for 2022, the Source Protection Committee has again recommended an overall progress of progressing well, uh, but remains short of target. So as of December 31st, 2022, 51% of significant drinking water threats in the Grand River have been addressed. This is an improvement compared to 39% in 2021. However, there are a number of factors outside of the control of the implementing bodies that have impacted implementation of the plan. Uh, so this is a large groundwater dependent population with extensive protected areas. There have also been several amendments to the source protection plan in recent years uh, that have identified new wells with new protection areas. This has resulted in new potential threats that need to be addressed. In addition to the new threats, uh, there has been an increase in the number of development reviews that has significantly increased the workload for municipalities. And we continue to see impacts from COVID-19 19 restrictions that have delayed on the ground implementation for the past several years. Thank you. All right, thank you. So we have a recommendation, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll read that after. I just wanna, since she's at the podium to see if there's any comments or questions, John. And I really appreciate the, the, uh, the report, particularly, uh, the discussion around where we are in terms of uh, achieving the objectives. And my assumption is that on an annual basis, you were setting, a, uh, setting objectives, working with the committee. Uh, and I'd, I'd be interested to know, uh, you know, what, what is our, our plan for 2023 in terms of achieving uh, the matters that were identified in your presentation? 
Um, what's your sense of, of where you'll end up by the end of the year in terms of, uh, in terms of achievement? So through you, Chair. Um, the, the target in general is um, implementation of the policies within the plan. So a number of policies, um, it, there were some that were only effective as of the beginning of 2022. Um, so we do expect those will be implemented for 2023. Um, and in terms of the other uh, areas within the plan where we've identified some delays, um, septic inspections was one of those. And our municipalities have identified a work plan to um, finalize those inspections for the 2018 to 2022 cycle. Um, and then we will be moving into the next five-year cycle. Uh, so we, we're we hoping that by by next year for 2023, we will be able to report that everything was finalized for that inspection cycle. And then um, hoping you know to continue with good implementation progress in the future. Um, and the other area was with risk management plans. Um, and this is an area that has been delayed for a number of source protection regions. And municipalities are working really hard to address those as fast as they can. And we're, we've been having discussions with the province as well uh, to try to come up with ways to implement those. I mean, I probably should have also, uh, uh, based on my questions on an understanding that this is something that will ultimately never be achieved. It's, it's, a, it's a rolling target. Uh, and the best you can do is is the best you can do uh, because circumstances change. Uh, and I'm, I'm assuming that is the correct assumption to make. So through you, Chair. Uh, yes, we, we are continually amending and updating the source protection plan, which brings on new significant uh, drinking water threats. Uh, we also, through field verification and implementation of policies, are sometimes able to remove threats as well. All right. Thanks, John. Are there any further comments or questions? So I'm going to put the motion on the floor that report SPA 042301 submission of the 2022 Grand River Annual Progress Report be received as information and that staff be directed to submit the 2022 Grand River Annual Progress Report and supporting information to the Director of Conservation and Source Protection, Ministry of the Environment, Conservation and Parks in accordance with Section 46 of the Clean Water Act 2006. Can I get a mover for that, please? Moved by Gord, seconded by uh, Pam. Uh, all in favor? Or sorry, any opposed? <laughs> any opposed? That's easier. All right, that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you for that presentation. Um, moving along to 12.2, I have a motion that report SPA 042302, submission of the amended Grand River Source Protection Plan and assessment be received as information and that staff be directed to submit the amended Grand River Source Protection Plan to the Ministry of the Environment and Conservation, Conservation and Parks for approval. Moved by Brian, seconded by Guy. Comments, questions? Go ahead, David. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me fine? Yep. Okay, a uh, couple of questions there. Um, one, the, one of the amendments is new water quality policies to address liquid hydrocarbon pipelines. Um, can somebody tell me what a liquid hydrocarbon is? I have a guess, but I'd like to hear it. Any chemists in the room? Through you, Mr. Chair, these could be liquid um, uh, gas, natural gas pipelines. They could be oil, uh, oil pipelines. So a few natural gas pipelines do pass through our jurisdiction. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, I, I wasn't sure because it did say liquid. I, I thought gas was was the gas, but uh, okay. So there are a lot, we know there's a lot of natural gas pipelines in our area. 
Um, my second question, Mr. Chair, the uh, on a related note to hydrocarbons, uh, not necessarily related to the uh, amendment, though, um, the province is doing a, a study. They're consulting on uh, former oil and gas wells in our region, and um, we know they can pollute uh, our groundwater, our source water. So my question, is there anybody from the GRCA and or the Source Protection Committee that are involved uh, in, in those consultations or, or will be attending? Because I, I do think it's a, an important matter for water. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, no, I don't believe we're directly involved in that study, but there are mechanisms through the Source Protection Plan to capture potential threats from things like uh, oil and gas wells. Okay, uh, Mr. Chair, it's not a it's not a study per se. They are consulting. So they are, they, we, I don't know, I, I assume everybody at this uh, table got that invitation on their email. I know I did and a few others I talked to as well, um, where, where they are consulting with um, stakeholders basically in the area about how to deal with these uh, old oil and gas wells. So I'm I will say I'm a little surprised <laughs> that uh, maybe somebody is not attending those. Um, I'm not sure where to go from here, but. Uh, David, if we get invited, we will certainly show up. Okay, I will, I will look for that email. <laughs> I will forward it on if I can. All right, thank you, sir. Sue? Okay. You're muted, Sue. She's all right. Are you okay? Thumbs up. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I notice you don't have a picture of me behind you there. I'll send you one. Um, does anybody else have any comments or questions? Okay. Again, thank you for the answers there. So I'm going to call the question. Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you for that presentation and those answers. Okay. So Moving right along, I think that's it for the source protection, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, can I get a mover to adjourn? Moved by Brian, seconded by John. Any opposed? That is adjourned. So we're going to move now right into the general membership meeting and uh, start the process once again. We're going to call the meeting to order and reconfirm quorum. Uh, yes, Chair White, we still have more than 50% of the members present. Thank you. Okay, so... Um, I have a motion that the agenda for the general membership meeting be approved as amended. We've added one item to the closed session, so that's why there's an amendment. Moved by Mike, seconded by Doug. Uh, any opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Hearing and seeing none. I have a motion that the minutes of the general membership meeting of March 24th, 2023 be approved as circulated. Moved by Jerry, seconded by Christine. Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Right down to correspondence. I have a motion that correspondence from Jan Jansen and Nicole Doro regarding protecting Ontario's wetlands be received for information. Moved by Sue, seconded by Mike, any opposed comments or questions? Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Moving along to the insurance renewal. I'll put the motion on the floor. That report number GM042338, general insurance renewal 2023-2024 be received as information. Moved by Bruce, seconded by Sue. Go ahead, David. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, two quick questions. Uh, first one, um, I was looking at the deductibles. I see it varies by category, anywhere from five hundred to twenty-five thousand dollars. When were the deductibles last adjusted? It probably upwards, but when was that? Um, I get they certainly get reviewed annually through you, Chair White. Um, I I couldn't speak to the exact dates for all of them, but they do get reviewed annually as part of the entire process. Okay, and, and I ask that in the context, if you, obviously everybody is aware that if you have higher deductibles, you have lower premiums. So is that, 
Has that been looked at? For you, Chair White, yeah, that is part of the discussion that happens annually with the insurance committee. Uh, so we are part of a larger group with other conservation authorities um, as administered through Conservation Ontario. So part of the discussion is that offset and, you know, different insurance companies may provide quotes with different, slightly different parameters. So they, they may have a higher deductible and then maybe there is an offset on the rates. Sometimes we do have a very niche business with a lot of significant risk areas. So we don't always get a lot of interested parties. Um, but it certainly is an ongoing discussion to to manage those two things, the deductible and the rates. No, I I, I agree. Um, municipalities are in the same boat. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of people offering it. Um, the second question, Mr. Chair, is uh, the budget for the insurance was I believe it's eight hundred twenty five thousand, um, and the bill come in at seven hundred twenty thousand actual costs. So this is a decrease of one hundred five thousand. What becomes of that 105000 Does that just go into the year-end surplus, or does that go into a, a reserve fund to smooth out insurance increases in the future? What, what becomes of that 105000 Let me get you an expert. you, Mr. Chair. At present, it'll just uh, fall to the bottom line. It'll be showing as a surplus in future forecasts. But uh, towards year end, there could be some uh, concrete decisions made whether that would go into some sort of a reserve. But that's usually part of the year end discussion. Okay. And I'll just throw my opinion out now. I, I prefer that because, it, as you know, um, insurance costs tend to spike. So it's nice to see that flatten out with the uh, with any uh, excess we have in one year or so. But I'll, I'll leave it at that, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the answers. Guy? Uh, thank you, Chair White. Um, I, on page 15 of our agenda, it, it talks there about the umbrella liability of $13 million per occurrence, and then underneath it says self-insured. Could you explain uh, that in a little more detail? Uh, through you, Chair White, the way I understand it, it's very much like a deductible. So it's um, the the self and it's for whatever reason that's the term, but there is that that deductible aspect of it. Okay. I can confirm that though. Uh, I, I sorry, oh, I don't have the exact definition right off the top of my head, so I'd be happy to get back to you about that. Okay, that'll that'll be fine. Thank you. Okay. All right. Are there any other comments or questions? And I should point out, I mean, the renewal here is at four point seven, which is. Very good. I mean, staff are doing a great job here, especially with the type of insurance we have to get. And I know some of you folks looking at the municipal insurance and other, even your own home insurance is going through the roof. So good job on staff's behalf with, with that return. So uh, call the question, any opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. Moving along, the next motion is that the Grand River Conservation Authority approve the revised joint GRCA GRCF naming policy moved by Pam, seconded by Rob. Comments or questions on this? Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you very much. Cash and investment. That report number GM042331, cash and investment status. March 2023 be received as information. Moved by Jerry, seconded by Sean. Comments, questions? Any, op any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Financial summary. That the financial summary for the period ending March 31, 2023 be approved. Moved by uh, Pam, seconded by, was that you, Christine? Thank you. All right, uh, any comments or questions here? Any opposed? That is carried, thank you. Provincial Offenses Act motion that the Grand River Conservation Authority point Rhonda Card and Avery Jenks as Provincial Offense, Offenses Act officers to enforce section 29 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Moved by Gary, seconded by Board. Comments, questions? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. Provincial Offenses 
Act officer that the Grand River Conservation Authority appoint Nicholas Staskic and Tyler Slot as provincial offense officers to enforce section 28 of the Conservation Authorities Act. Moved by John, seconded by Kerry. Comments, questions? All, uh, any, go ahead, Mike. Is it safe to assume that these people are already employees of the GRC? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes, they are. Thank you. Anything further? A any opposed? It's carried, thank you. Development interference wetlands. I have a motion that report number GM 042332 development interference with wetlands and alterations to shorelines and watercourses regulation be received as information moved by Sean, seconded by Pam. Comments or questions? Any opposed? Carried, thank you. So moving along to the flood event, we have a presentation here, I believe. Sorry. He is here to uh, entertain us for the next three hours. Welcome, sir. I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, sir. Good morning. I'll try to pull a Dwight, but I don't have a school blue jacket, though, so. Yes, yes. I didn't touch it. You can ask. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much. And uh, this is just a brief overview of the flooding event that we had on April 1st. Um, um, before I dive into it, there is a capture of the storm that I have been able to download and play as a video for you. I hope it works right now, and I think it appears that it's working. Pay attention to the bottom left corner. You see the date and time of the day. This event had three cells, basically. It started as uh, uh, ice storms and thunderous storms in early hours of the Friday morning. That's when it hit us first. We were lucky that the cell of it was not on the upper portion of the watershed. It was mostly on a net river system and lower portion of the ground. Then another system happened on Friday morning. We had really concerns about this cell over here. It got stalled in the lower portion of the watershed, but thankfully it wasn't really significant in our area. Uh, it passed through the watershed on Friday. Um, that was the first hook of it, or that was the first uh, wave of it. Then we uh, were anticipating a bigger amount of a storm hitting us on Saturday morning. Um, it started early hours of Saturday morning, around midnight, uh, hit us the, from west. Again, um, this that's the second wave, um, just dissipated on early hours of Saturday morning before like 4 or 5 a.m. This was the second wave and another wave was coming in uh, through the day on Saturday afternoon, I believe. Um, we will see that it was around um, noonish that it started hit, impacting areas in our watershed. Uh, we, at some point, were very concerned because a very heavy cell was formed the west of us that could have easily been very catastrophic, but thankfully it just was very fast moving and it dissipated before hitting us. That was the third wave. Um, as a result of that, we received somewhere between 30 to 60 millimeters of the rain in the watershed, depending where we are, a bit less in north, more in south and southwest, mostly on the river system. Um, so if I go to, yeah, uh, you can see the total rainfall uh, fr starting from Friday, March 31st until the end of Sunday, April 2nd, based on radar data was a bit less in north, mostly in south and southwest corner of the watershed, somewhere between 30 to 60 millimeters of rain. 
uh, that was based on radar. This map shows the amount of rainfall based on our own gauges. Uh, and we can see we had around 60 millimeters in Paris area, which was quite significant. Up in the northern part of the watershed, we had a bit more than what's being shown on this map, but it was ice storms, and those ice storms tend to uh, result in an underestimation of the rainfall with our rain gauges. Uh, our staff were on it and immediately fixed everything, and everything was fine, but generally speaking, the depth of the rain is a bit underestimated up there. Uh, going forward here, I'm just trying to show you uh, or paint a picture of how the conditions were at the watershed. Air temperatures, you can see the day on our pattern. We had a lot of a snow at that time. If you recall, we had several snowstorms late February and early March. So we had quite significant of uh, snowpack in the upper portion of the watershed. We did have some melt and thaw, basically. There was some freeze and thaw happening from March 15, which was our last snow course leading up to that event basically we had some days that the temperatures would hit as high as 10 degrees but then it would go drop below the zero in the evening it would melt things and then freeze them again that usually is something that results in uh, the snowpack to become ripen and then it would melt much faster when we have the right conditions and as you can see um, we did have the right conditions happening on around april 1st and march 31st the temperatures went up reached around 15 degrees in some parts of the watershed and did not drop for 24 hours which was ideal condition for a rapid melt, uh, along with 30 to 60 millimeters of rain. And that was what was observed. Um, in this picture, I'm just trying to show you a comparison of the snow survey in the watershed in a span of 15 days. On the left, you can see our latest snow survey on March 15th. And everywhere in the watershed, we had either normal levels of snow or, or significantly higher than um, uh, long-term averages, mostly in the lower portion of the watershed. Um, after this event, the snow survey that was conducted on April 3rd, the Monday following the event, we still had some snow left in the upper portion of the watershed, but everywhere else, all the snowpack was gone. That shows how fast the event resulted in a melt of almost everywhere, everything everywhere. Going forward again, just to show you how the reservoir conditions were, reservoirs were at um, April 1st targets already. Like We had a very small amount of a storage left in our large dams, Shandon, Conestogo leading up to the event, basically. However, um, uh, things went very well, uh, quite frankly, in a sense that uh, we did not have significant um, flooding everywhere and reservoirs performed very well, I can show you as we go forward. We had to issue four messages that day and there were some areas near headwaters like uh, uh, um, above Drayton or some other communities like West Monroe's Ham near Hamburg and Air experienced level one uh, flooding, but it was just the low-lying area, some walking trails, nothing significant, quite frankly. And our website helped very well. You can see that the number of hits that the website had during that week is almost double than what we was uh, compared to the prior week. People were, generally speaking, looking at their um, notifications, and uh, I think um, we were successful in issuing the messages. Going forward, um, as I said, we did experience uh, zone one flooding in West Monroe's, Bob Drayton, New Hamburg, Air, some low lying and walking trails uh, in the lower portion of the watershed as well, but nothing major. Um, the reservoirs did result in a reduction of the flooding in some areas, uh, roughly around 20 to 60 percent, depending where you are in the watershed. One of the um, uh, significant areas was basically downstream of the uh, confluence between Conestogo and the Grand River. Um, the reservoirs and the reduction that we saw resulted in some properties in village of Conestogo not to be flooded, which would otherwise be actually uh, flooded. Uh, the threshold over is somewhere around 400 CMS, and we were able to reduce the flows to around 340, basically, as opposed to if we did not have the uh, reservoirs, it would be around 450 cubic meters. So there are some properties along the golf, carf golf course trail around uh, in uh, village of Conestogo that would have been uh, flooded significantly. Other than that, I think uh, Guelph Dam or the Speed River system saw the highest impact uh, based on the reduction by reservoirs to around 60%. And overall, we really didn't have any major flooding anywhere in the watershed. If there are any questions, I'll be more than happy. Otherwise. All right, thank you. Uh, any comments or questions from the board? Uh, go off the slides here. Okay. Everyone good? Well, thank you for that presentation. It's nice to get a bit of an update on all that stuff and the weather that's been happening for the past couple of months. So I, I will admit it wasn't as exciting a video as I thought we were getting, but it'll do. All right. So I, I, I 
So I have a motion that report number GM 042336, April 2023 flood event be received as information. Moved by Brian, seconded by Pam. All, uh, any opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. And you might want to, in case there's, I've, next motion is that report number GM 042333, current watershed conditions as of April 15th, 2023, be received as information. Moved by Doug, seconded by Sue. Any comments or questions? All right, any opposed? That is carried. Thank you, sir, appreciate it. So we're gonna be moving along to a closed session now, I believe so. I have a motion that the general membership enter a closed meeting in accordance with the Municipal Act Section 239, two for the following purposes, proposed or pending acquisition or disposition, security of property and labor relations or employee negotiations. Moved by Sue, seconded by Guy. Any opposed? Further, the objectives of the Grand River Conservation Authority by assisting a utility in providing services. Therefore, be it resolved that the Grand River Conservation Authority grant an easement over a portion of lands described as part lots 115, 18, concession three, lots 1314, 18, concession four, lots 118, 19, concession five, lot 18, concession six. Township of Maple and County of Wellington to be more particularly described on a reference plan to be deposited for installation, access, and maintenance of a fiber optic line for the normal consideration of $2. Moved by Bruce, seconded by Jim. Catch all your hands up. Seconded by Jim. Um, comments, questions? Any opposed? That is carried. Thank you. Next item, labor relations, that the Grand River Conservation Authority ratify the collective agreement as negotiated with OPSU Local 259 for the period of January 1, 2022 to December 31, 2025, and that the human resources policies be amended to incorporate the applicable changes for non-union staff. Moved by Sean, seconded by Doug. Comments, questions? Any opposed? Carried, thank you. Motion that the minutes of the previous closed session be approved. Moved by John, seconded by Gord. Any opposed? Carried. Uh, here we are, that the meeting of the general membership be adjourned. Moved by John, seconded by Brian. Go ahead, John, sorry. Oh, so you know what, I, I miss Warren, I forget other business. I was just trying to save us, I'm kidding. Go ahead, what? Okay, okay, he can't, oh, because. I can relay your question if it's. Okay, uh, I'm sure you folks out on Zoom couldn't hear that, correct? Okay, so I'm gonna try to paraphrase the comments from John. It's with regards to Zoom meetings and meeting attendance. Um, the point being that uh, the idea behind having hybrid meetings was it was supposed to be to some degree a last resort. So if you can't attend a meeting, illness, weather, so forth, that um, 
that was kind of what the idea behind it was. And in order for good governance, you want to have folks attend in person as often as they can. It's not a comment on anybody's what they're up to or their business. It's not our it's not our call. If you need to be at home, that's completely up to you. It's just a comment that the attendance here in person has been uh, limited. So going forward, it's just a thought. If you can make it in, you should try and come in for the benefit of good governance and to, to meet your fellow board members. Do you, does Brian's mic work? Okay. All right, Brian was supporting John's position and um, indicates the preference would be to folks be here if they can. Um, Mike? Okay, uh, so I think that the point has been made. Um, thank you. Is there any other business? All right, a motion to adjourn. Brian and John, any opposed? That is carried. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you uh, in the happy days of May. Enjoy the rest of your...